Summer photography, not easy. Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, I've just been having a little bit of a, a summer break, which I usually do each year. Uh, I was intending to go and shoot bluebells after my last video, but uh, I, I decided against it on uh, advice from another photographer um, who I was going to meet up with, uh, Daniel Retham, who uh, he has a YouTube channel on here as well, does some lovely photography. I'd highly recommend going and having a look at his stuff. Uh, yeah, I was going to go down and meet up with him, but he said it. the bluebells weren't so good this year, so I, I missed that. And then since that point, it's been absolutely bone dry in the Lake District, probably like a lot of other areas. Uh, four or five weeks straight of just blazing blue skies. So um, I've always said that on this channel, I'm not going to force videos out for the sake of it. And uh, you'll see a lot of people on this platform. Um, it, it's quite funny watching people who really have to put videos out on here that... Uh, they're going out in absolutely boring conditions and trying to give the idea that they're really enjoying it and you can see that it's like pulling teeth. Um, each to their own, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I love being out in the summer, absolutely love the summer. I, I spent 20 years on a golf course, but uh, in terms of photographing it, uh, I like interesting conditions to work with and yeah, 30 degrees and blue skies isn't for me, so I'll leave that to other people, but tonight, the reason I'm out is because we have quite an interesting forecast. Uh, there's a chance of a, a front coming through with a bit of broken cloud. So I'm hoping that uh, I might be able to get some photography done tonight. Uh, I've come up to Tom Heights. Now, this is a place that I haven't been to in, God, it's got to be six or seven years, I would say. Uh, it's becoming quite a popular spot with photographers now. And, it, you know, it's easy to see why it's, it's a lovely spot. Um, but it lined up quite well with the forecast tonight, so, so that's why I'm here. The plan, hopefully, is that as the sun drops, I might get a bit of a crack in the cloud and uh, can get the long lens on and shoot some more silhouette-type shots of the birches over on Home Fell. Uh, that's the plan, but uh, at the minute, it's a little bit flat, so, uh, so we'll just have to see. So just while I'm waiting around for this light, this is probably a good chance to talk you through what I'm looking at here. This little copse of trees here is what I shot last time I was up here. Now, the last time I came here about six years ago, the weather really wasn't very really good and I didn't have an awful lot of time to explore. But uh, but yeah, this, this little patch of trees here is quite nice. Now, compositionally, I'm not 100% sure that works so well in that there's a lot of dead space right and left. I would probably shoot that as a square. Now you can just, hopefully you can just make out, beyond this little uh, copse of trees here, there's two further ones in the distance. What I'm trying to make sure is that there isn't too big of a gap between the main copse and the true trees there. The further left you go, the more they become disconnected. So you just want to get to a nice sort of evenly balanced spot there so i think that one works pretty well there now if i just move a bit further along of course as i'm saying this the light's starting to get out now um i actually quite like this composition with them sort of smack in the middle because the v in the valley in the distance there sort of frames it nicely you got almost two bookends there with the mountains in the distance. Now, the only thing here is the two trees that I was talking about further beyond, you can just make out in the gap there. I just need to make sure that I hide them. So I just need to sort of come a bit further to the right and then hopefully you can't see them. So something like that might work pretty well. Possibly in portrait as well. If I just turn it around, it might be more of a portrait shot, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, this is the, the sort of first composition that I'm looking at here. Okay, now we're talking. Something to, uh, something to work with. I'll just, uh, just one sec. Just knock the record off there. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, sun's got out. And this is pretty much what I was after here. Spotlit trees, nice shadowy dark background in the distance and uh, a nice classic sort of summer scene. So I'm going to take a few shots of this composition. 
Uh, one thing I'm not in love with here is that little patch of shrubbery on the base of the tree on the first clump on the left hand side it's a little bit dark and it's a little bit distracting uh, i'm not a fan of cloning stuff but uh, i don't think this is going to be like a portfolio image or anything so i might have to clone that little bit out and that little patch of rocks on the right hand side is a little distracting as well but it's not as bad as that little shrub there but all in all not a bad little scene this and uh I don't think I'm the first photographer to, <laughs> to photograph this scene, but it is a lovely little scene here looking across the Langdale Pike. So I'm going to take a few shots here. Uh, what oh, technical, God, people like the technical stuff, don't they? Um, about 55 millimeter, uh, F8. I may focus stack this, I don't, I'm not sure. It's one of those where it falls into that gray area of focus where your depth of field can drop off a little bit. Um, so yeah, Possibly a focus stack, I'm going to bracket it as well because we've got really quite strong light now and uh, I don't think I can quite get it in the one shot. So, uh, so yeah, not too bad. Oh, I've got a bit nippy. Got the jacket on. Right, you should be able to see behind me uh, that front that I was talking about is coming in and with time moving on, I don't think by the time it shifts the light's going to get back out i will stick it out for a bit and see if this clears and we do get some some more light but uh, it's not looking too promising to be honest I, th I think i'll stay dry by the looks of things but uh time's moving on a bit now it's what time is it it's about quarter past eight and the light needed for this shot is only going to last for about i reckon about another half an hour so I think what we'll do here is if I don't get any more light, uh, we'll head back to the computer and we'll do a little bit of processing on this image because I've not done anything in terms of post-processing on this channel for a little while. And uh, this will be a tricky one to edit, I think, because uh, we've got a lot of green and green is notoriously difficult to process, especially this time of year. Cameras do have a habit of rendering this sort of scene very yellow so uh so it'll be a tricky one to process so if i don't get anything further from here uh we'll head back to the computer and see how we get on with this image right folks welcome back to the shop uh just a quick one before we get started on this edit uh just want to show you a piece of kit that i've just invested in this is the mac studio and uh, i've brought all my editing stuff back into the gallery how i used to do it before doing any youtube videos uh, in an attempt to improve my time management a bit because uh, what i was finding was that i was just losing so many evenings uh, doing video editing because i couldn't do it in the shop while it was quiet so uh, i'll get a few evenings back hopefully doing it this way uh, but this mac studio absolutely fantastic piece of kit uh, i've been an ardent windows user uh, for years and I couldn't really justify the cost of Macs previously when they were running Intel chips inside them but uh, now they're on Mac silicon these machines are absolutely rapid uh, I've been using the iPad Pro for about 18 months now on one-to-one uh, -one workshops for editing on the go and uh, that piece of kit's absolutely brilliant so, uh, so yeah first impressions of this Mac Studio absolutely excellent Nothing I'm throwing it at it at the minute is even touching it. I haven't heard the fans once, uh, which is pretty impressive. Um, I don't really do reviews and stuff on this channel, but if you're interested to know how I get on with this uh, Mac Studio, leave me a comment and I'll maybe do a, a quick review of it in a couple of months and let you know how I get on. But right, anyway, without further ado, let's get into this uh, edit. So we've got our two files ready for editing here in Lightroom. We've got our bright frame on the left that's been exposed for the foreground and then we've got our dark frame on the right that is exposed for the sky. Now there's two things that I really just want to get out of this edit. The first thing is to sort out the greens. Now I mentioned this in the field that uh, there's a tendency for certain cameras to render these types of greens quite yellow and as you can see here hopefully on this screen recording that the the greens look to my eye anyway a lot yellower than what i saw out in the field so what i'm going to try and do is just introduce a bit more freshness into those greens 
The second thing is the haze. Now, haze is something in, that you're going to encounter in the summer. There's no way of getting around it. What you can do is look for subjects like this that play into that. Now, a lot of the time, a lot of photographers will immediately try and put the polarizer on and cut down some of this glare. And in certain instances, that can be the right thing to do. But for me, with this type of scene, what I actually want is a little bit more haze in the background. And what that's going to do is give me a bit more separation from the foreground elements, which are those nice, brightly lit birches. If I start adding contrast to the mid and background, it's going to start confusing the issue a little bit. And it's actually going to take away from that nice foreground. So what I'll look to do is reduce the contrast in the mid-ground and just play to that hazy atmosphere. So first things first, let's get these two files over into Photoshop because they need to be blended together. Okay, so we've got our two files in Photoshop here. First thing we need to do is align them. So if we just go to Edit, Auto Align Layers, and OK that. Just make sure that we haven't got any misaligned frames here. So with this being an exposure blend, I need to bring the dark frame of the sky back through. So I'm going to do this using a layer mask. So if I just add a layer mask to this top uh, bright layer, go to the gradient tool. Now this has been improved in the last update of Photoshop and it's really good now. So when I drag around here, you can see what's going on with the, the gradient a lot better. It's a lot easier to visualize. So if I place the gradient about there and then just very softly bring it down and just adjust this a little bit, you can see I'm getting a really nice soft feathered edge. This is really great for people who like to do exposure blending. Uh, this is as good a advert as I've seen for not using grads out in the field anymore. You can, you can just see how much control you've got with this. Uh, whereas if you were using a grad out in the field, that would be quite destructive and you'd end up with a dark patch over this lighter area of the uh, the mountains in the distance. So just going to position my grad there. And now we've got a nice soft feathered edge and we've got the two files married up together. So all I need to do now is just merge these together and then they'll be ready for the global edits that I'm going to add. Okay, now with our layers merged together, I'm going to go into Camera Raw. So if I just go to Filter and Camera Raw. Now, normally I would do all this in Lightroom, but because we're doing an exposure blend and I'm just gone straight into Photoshop, I'll do the basic global edits in uh, Camera Raw here. So I'm not going to do this too exhaustively, so I'm just going to skip this part and get the file ready to where I need it to. Okay, so I've just added a little bit of punch to the image, just a little bit of contrast using the curves and just rebalance the sky a little bit. First things first, I need to sort out these greens. So you, hopefully you can see on the screen here that they do look quite muddy and quite yellow. And I just want to introduce a bit of freshness back into them. So the way I'm going to do that is just go into the color mixer and look at these yellow and green sliders. So if I go to the hue, what I want to do is make this green a bit more green rather than it being yellow. So if I just got the green slider and just nudge it to the right, and you just see, hopefully, that the the green in the in the greens rather than the yellow is starting to come through a bit more. Just about there. And then I'm just going to do the same with the yellows. Now, I've got to be careful with moving this yellow slider because, obviously, the sun is coming out of the top left-hand side of the frame, and that's obviously a, a warmer, yellower light. So... It stands to reason that these ferns in the foreground are going to have a little bit of that in them. So I don't, I don't want it to look unrealistic, but at the same time, I just want to stop the colours looking a bit muddy. So that looks pretty good. Now, the second thing I touched on is the haze in the mid and far distance. 
this is going to be a bit tricky because anytime you've got trees that are cutting up through a horizon line like we've got here, making any kind of selections to things pertaining to luminosity can be quite tricky. What I'm going to try and do here is reduce the contrast in the mid-ground just to bring the foreground birch trees out a bit more. As I mentioned earlier, if I start adding contrast to that mid-ground, it's going to become a little bit confusing. So what I'll do is just go to the masks and then create a new mask and we'll go to luminance range. So I'm just going to hover on one of these shadowed trees about there. And you can see what's been brought up there. Now the problem here is it's selected some of the foreground as well, which we don't really want to affect. Now, as I mentioned, trying to remove some of these elements because trees are a funny shape and it's, it's very tricky to do selections around them. What I'm gonna try and do here is just remove some of these foreground elements that that luminance mask has picked up. So what I'll do is I'll go to the subtract tool and go to color range and what this will hopefully do if I pick a sort of brighter green it should get rid of some of these foreground elements that it's picked up so if we try if we try that now that that's that's pretty good to be honest I think that's going to be as good as I can get really We've got that mid ground selected nicely and we've got most of the selections that it was picking up in the foreground out. You can see in the bottom left that it's still picked up some of the rocks, but I can actually go back in there and just add the contrast back in basically. So what I'll do now, just so I can see this a little better, is if I untoggle the short overlay, and all we're going to do now is just try and reduce contrast in that mid ground. So if I you just pull the blacks up a little bit now we don't want this to look unrealistic it you know it can look silly very quickly if you overdo it but i'm just going to raise the blacks a little bit just reduce my contrast just about minus eight and i'm also just going to add a little bit of negative uh d hairs something like that that looks pretty good so if I just toggle on and off here, you can see the effect that that's going to have. You can see that's on, that's on rather, and that's off. And what we've hopefully done there is just brought those foreground birches out a little bit more and given me a little bit more subject separation. So that's looking pretty good now. I don't need to do an awful lot more with this. I'm just going to go back into Photoshop and use the Nick collection just to refine some of the colours a little bit more. But as far as the edit goes, this is 98% done now. So here we have our final image on the screen. All I've done here is just do a little bit of a crop. You can see uh, here that I've just cropped the right and left hand sides. I, I did say out in the field that I was probably going to do this because it'll just hold your eye in the frame a little better. Uh, I've just added a little bit more warmth to the to the light that's hitting the trees and just a very, very subtle vignette just to hold your eye in the frame a little bit more. But all in all, this isn't a bad shot and it's one that I'd have liked to have taken probably about half an hour later when the light was a little bit more soft and a bit more forgiving, but beggars can't be choosers. It was just nice to be up there in a spot that I hadn't been to for a long time and uh, certainly one I'll be coming back to in the near future. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you found this little editing tip useful. Keep liking and subscribing and I'll catch you on the next one.